it's so good of a card, you know? Well, I mean, you can kind of say that about, like, I feel like Fiendish Chain at one point. I mean, maybe not this format, but, like, like just because the card was strong for two months of this format doesn't necessarily mean it just gets thrown on the ban list. But do you ever see it, do you ever see it being bad again? Like, any time in the, for the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh! that anyone, well, yeah, any deck Compulse, that makes extra Compulse dark things is bad against a lot of decks. I hate the card Compulse. Um, against a lot of decks, like, assuming, um, you're versing, uh, like, obviously it's bad against Big B to the deck. Because they yeah. can just summon it again. That's why you need bottomless for your big beaters at your locals. Um, but I don't know. I think it's seen enough play this format that it can go to two. But I don't think it's. I only think it's going to happen if they put bottomless the three. Like I just see that swap why, happening. Why is that? Uh, why is that natural to you? I don't know. I just because nobody played bottomless, but everybody played compulsive this format. Like you don't think anyone played bottomless? Like no, nobody played no, bottomless too. Really? Except my yeah. One of them hit Dragosec, The other one didn't. A bottomless trigger sack. Does it? No, oh, no, yeah, I'm thinking with tokens. Okay. Bottomless, it's Kaiku, too. Yeah. And, like, people still opted not to play it. They thought Compulse was the superior trap. Um. I don't know. Whatever people's reasoning was, they played Compulse over Bottomless, this format. Um. Compulse to do. So I'm saying Compulse to do, just because it was a. Like, it was in everyone's deck, and Bottomless wasn't. So that's my prediction. It, it's it might be stupid, but I have a lot of stupid predictions on here. Like um, I have Upstar Goblin the two also. Really? Mm-hmm. My card's been getting away unscathed for so long now. Like any deck that just wants to be more consistent just plays it. Um, and then it was also played in triplicates to this format in spellbooks. So um, just like Impulse, it was in people's decks, and it's you know it's a good card. Well, Valor's been consistently in people's decks. And that's on my neck. That's on my list next. Yeah, Valor's on my list also. Yeah. Like, like it's just something that they would do. Pretend effect Valor is called Thunder King Ryo. It was in people's decks. People might not have played three, but it's just a card that people play. They said they did this format. Yeah. They did play well, three. <laughs> I'm saying they might not have. You know, like it doesn't matter how many they played. The fact of the matter is, people played Valor. I think Upstar, Compulse, and Valor are all very vulnerable to going to two. What about Max C? Max C, I think, is a little different situation. Max C is not as good as Valor. Like, Max C does what Max C does, and nothing else does that. But Valor It's is, a level one light tuner. It's a level one light tuner. Um, and if you need to play Fiendish Chains instead, you can, but, like, Max C, there's no replacement for Max C. You know? Um, if Max C's out of the picture, then then that's it. But if Valor... Flying play, C. Yeah, if people can't play three Valors, then they just play a Fiendish Chain instead. Yeah. What does Flying C do? Um, when your opponent normally special summons a monster, you can special summon it to your opponent's side of the field. Um, and <clears throat> they cannot exceed while it's on their field. So, um, Fiendish Chain was played in threes uh, last September. Mm -hmm. Nearly everyone played three, except right. like so why wouldn't Fiendish Chain get hit last year, and why is Compulse a different story this year? Um, Fiendish Chain's more widely usable as well, like... Because I think Compulse is simply better than Fiendish Chain, like... It's not vulnerable to MST, in fact, you want it to get MST so you can chain it. Whereas Fiendish Chain, there was, there was ways to play around it, you know? Um, but Compulse is just like... You know, you can just keep on trying to make Xyz, I'm just gonna keep compulsing them, you know? Yeah. I feel like Konami doesn't like it. Okay. That's just how I feel though. It was just such a strong card this format. Um I mean they played Compulse in, in wind up format also. They did. It's been played throughout most formats, like and it's only been seeing more and more and more and more play. Like it used to be like that one of tech that you would play alongside your staple traps. Um and then it became like a two of you tech. In your fortieth card in, in your deck. Yeah, exactly. And then it became like more of a tech like more people started playing it and then like everybody started playing it and then everybody started playing three of it and that's what we are now it's just so much of a staple I think it's going to get hit it's literally a staple trap well, do you think the card would really see play if like I mean like I, I feel like the, the card only exists because dragons exist and there was no other way to really hurt the deck except to really get rid of 
the X's that just came out. Like I'm saying, man, any deck that... I mean, like, if you replaced um, Dragons with uh, Rabbit or Windups, it would still be played. Yeah, like, any... Well, I don't think it would really be played to the extent. Like, people opted to play Compulse back then. Any any time that the extra deck is a popular strategy, which it will always be, Compulse is going to be pe- put in people's decks. It's as simple as that. Like, okay. you know, just because it's, like... It's not supposed to be a removal spell, but it is now. It just straight up is a removal spell. You know? Or a trap, rather. And it's chainable. You know? Um, and, like, I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to convince you that it's not format-specific. Like, it was played a lot this format, and it's going to keep being played until, you know, it eventually becomes a staple trap, which I think it is. Okay. Moving on. But, yeah. Um... What do you guys want to talk about? Super Rejuve. That's an obvious one. The 49ers. I think we're going to do next season. Um, yeah, Super Rejuve. Ban. I didn't start getting banned. <laughs> you don't ban. say. Ban, ban. Fuck that. <laughs> Here's for that card. Uh, all right, next. If you <laughs> Can we all card, agree? If you need, if you need a reasoning, please read the card. Um, that's, that's all I got to say about that. I vote Konami thinks before they make cards. <laughs> yeah, seconded. <laughs> My opponent went heavy storm, and then card destruction, and then choose two super juice, and then play dragons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. I guess if you want to talk about the big cards, you can talk about the Spellbook of Judgment. I think that Damn. card should be banned. I do too. And I play Spellbooks. And I think it will be banned. I think it's going to get banned. I don't I think they're going to do anything uh, except for ban that card. Yeah, There's so literally no way to fix it besides banning it. If you need our reasoning, please read the card. You'll think yeah. it one <laughs> If they put it at one, well, they, they also have to one. hit other shit. They have yeah, to hit everything. It's very reusable, even at one. The masters thing. Um, no. You just keep putting it back to your deck. Bubble Cook Judgment, you can either put it back up at the tower, or you can actually just banish it, um, and then just activate uh, whatever the fuck it's called and add it back to your hand. Yeah. So I think we're all in agreement that that card is like, I mean, <clears throat> Potentially, like, you could. I mean, um... Bounce the deck with that card, but you'd have to hit like a fuck Everything. ton of cards. When you could just hit that card to zero, and the deck would, would still work, it still functions fine. Yeah, in fact, I, I like the way it functions without that card. But knowing Konami, if if you look at their track record, just look at all the decks that used to have a card that was ban worthy, and look where they are now. Like um, well, Infinity Launcher, any- Gateway of the Six, um, you know, stuff like that. They like to put broken cards at one instead of zero for I some know. reason. Yep. Unless your windups, <laughs> and then um, your Zen Mighty is at zero. <laughs> but your magician's at one. There's also an extra deck card. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It was the first extra deck card to go on the banner. The first Ixies. Was it? Yep. Yes. Um. What was I gonna say though? Spellbook of Judgment. What about the um the little boy? Uh, what's the thing? So, profit. Well, assuming we, assuming judgment went to zero, little boy would be a problem. Well, little boy wouldn't be the problem. It would pro- secrets would probably get hit before little boy. They might even um, hit secrets or and or spellbook magician anyway, even if they ban spellbook of judgment. Oh my they god, might... this thing's busted. What thing? One of these random Pokemon, the the made up ones. Yeah, I think they're selling out. It's a fire Pokemon with dry skin. <laughs> That's stupid. Anyway, um <laughs> Anywho. But uh, I mean, I've never seen a card and just been so disgusted by the effect before. Before spell look of judgment. Yeah. Um however, I mean if I were Konami, I would think um I'd rather a deck never sack you than and balance the deck around it like that versus the deck the deck will sometimes sack you. 
and they'll get to play a really powerful card. And but Konami kind of they do like the exact it. opposite of that, though. That's the problem. Yeah, which is like which is a reason why um, Gateway's still one. Like, they're like, well, Gateway's really powerful, and we'll just let people completely sack their opponents sometimes, and it's balanced that way because you don't get to sack them all the time. Um, but if they put Spellbook of Judgment to one, they definitely have to hit Little Boy or uh, Secrets because it's just so surgical. Mm -hmm. I just picked up a card that was in a random stack of pot, like a random pile, and it's called Bachi Bachi Bachi. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm sad that I know what that card is. It's a I do big. as well. Um. All right, so we're we gonna move on from spell books. Is there anything else you guys think should, should happen to spell books, like tower or um, I don't know, anything? No. Okay. Fate. A lot of people say hit fate. No. No. That would uh, I mean, that's a route they could do, but I don't see that as the route they will do. I feel like you know how they hit hornet for some reason, um, instead of like addressing the actual problem at first. Um, well, you don't think hornet was a problem? Well, he was a problem, but like. Um, putting Dragonfly to one fixed the problem, and then putting Hornet to one, everyone was like, "Okay." Um, I, I thought it was the opposite. Everyone was more upset with fucking Hornet existing. Just... I don't know. I feel like um, they're gonna do the same thing with Fate. Everyone, they're gonna be like Judgment to like zero. And everyone's gonna be like, "Okay, cool." And they're gonna be like Fate to one. And everyone's gonna be like, "What?" Like, I don't think they should do that, but that's something, that's something they very much... I guess you're like, right. Instead of hitting Konami. the searcher, a la, like, centipede. Yeah. They would just say, well, let's just, uh, hit the, the ability. Yeah, deck. like, yeah, like, oh, the deck is powerful, what do they play? That's played? Okay, hit it. Kind of like how they were like, Hyperion's really powerful. Let's hit fucking the searcher. Mm-hmm. But, uh, granted... I keep saying the searcher, they're probably going to hit the searchers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Spellbooks are in a very, very, very weird situation. I wish they didn't have to be put into this situation, but they are. Um, I, uh, want to move on to the next thing? Um, I don't have a list of so, uh, you guys can lead the discussion. Let's see what else I have written down. What do I do with the other piece of paper? I have, I have Dragoons. I feel like that's probably going to get hit the one. Yep, that's on my list. Yeah. Just because of the presence it had before uh, Pack Down. Mm hmm. And that's the searcher. I feel like Dragoons to one is. I, I don't think anybody would think that's unfair. Even the people that play the deck yeah. would be like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, um, I mean, the only other uh, options, I guess, for that deck to really hit. I don't know, Dragoons can just search for them all, so I would think that Dragoons would get hit. Um, I, I really can't think of any other card to hit. Like, even if they hit even one, like, Dragoons for it. I mean, any, anyone else got an opinion, or... Well, I, I feel like Dragoons is, def is the definite if they're gonna hit the deck. If we're looking at anything else in the deck, I can't really think of much else, like... I like, think Diva also is a potential hit. Diva is Diva's a real big thing. Like and even though it's a tuner and I think they want more tuners in the game right now because of the new synchros they just released, I feel like this card's the exception. I feel like um Diva Diva's Diva's a straight up tour guide. Like that thing's good. You know? Um It's a free level five synchro or four synchro. Or a two star X Or three synchro, I guess technically, now that they have that new thing. Or if you just play two divas, you know, it's just it, you could parallel directly to Troll Guide right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, very good card in general. I don't know. Um, I I could definitely see it going to two or something like that. Just I I see it sitting right next to Tour Guide and you know kind of a long. It's like natural. Yeah, very natural. Um, how you guys feel about Tanky? Tanky, uh, I would normally say should probably get hit to one because it's a generic rota that can get bounced and gives an attack bonus but because they just released uh, a lot of fire for support in this set I don't think they're going to hit the deck that they want to exist um I think that the deck can the, the deck can still do what it does with one tanky 
So I feel that I'm going to call, in addition to saying Dragoon's the one, I'm also going to say Tanky the one. I think it would be Tanky the two. I think one yeah, would be a little I feel like Tanky would probably go to two, and then by the end of it all, they're just going to hit Tanky to one. Possibly. My prediction is one. I'm probably going to be wrong. Two sounds a lot better, actually. If they're going to hit it. I don't even know if they will. Which I think they should, but I don't know if Konami will. Uh, I have Gold Sarcophagus on here. What do you guys think about that card? I don't see Gold Sark getting hit. I would more so think that the Dragons directly would get hit. Um, well, don't forget that that card's been on the ban list before, so it's almost natural to go back onto the ban list. But, um, I mean, what would the you reason that they're going onto the list isn't because Gold Sark is inherently, like, I mean, I guess you could... This is this is a flawed logic, but Faze, what would you put it to? Gold Sark? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean whatever I put it to is probably what they were gonna play anyway. If I say put it to two, you're gonna be like, Oh dragons would only play two. And if I say one, you're gonna be like, Oh dragons only play one. And I know that's true, I do. But um it still deserves to be hit. Um just for being a generic rota. Um it's been at two before. It's been at one before. Um, and um it's a good card. I think the the only reason Gold Sark is is good is simply because of the effects of the dragons, though. Yes, um, but it's also Otherwise, a good that generic searcher. Big duty, but like, nobody would play that shit. That card hasn't seen play in since like Rabbit. It saw a brief play. People played it for a little bit. It's been played throughout a, many formats. Um, you know, uh, I can't even think of all the examples, but like. Um, Anybody that has had access to Levier has considered playing Gold Sark, and um, I don't know. I think Gold Sark is just a good card. I don't think it's poopy, but like you say, I think Gold Sark is the most generic searcher we have in the entire game, and um, it's it's. I think it's always vulnerable to being put at less than three, because I I frankly don't think it deserves to be there, even though I love the card to death. Yeah. Um. But that's just my take on it. So what would you see it get hit through if you wanted to get hit, or if you thought it was going to get hit? Um, hmm. Uh, I guess two would be the right number. Um, and I'm going to predict two also. Okay. But... Uh You got anything else to say about it, or are we going to move on? No, that's it. I was going to say, I have nothing else to say. So next up is probably uh, the dragons themselves. Mm-hmm. The, uh, fixing the problem would be hitting the babies, right? I don't... I think fixing the problem is hitting the dragons. Because they're the problem. Do you believe so? Face? What do you think? Um, my list doesn't contain any dragons of any kind. It contains the dragoons. Um, but I, I, I think that deck is very young. Um, unlike unlike Atlanteans, like Atlanteans and Firefist are are older are older archetypes, and um, I think they're much more vulnerable. Spellbooks are also an older archetype, and Super Rejuvenation is an old card. But uh, these dragons haven't really. Um, like, I mean, they're. It's obvious to anybody with eyes that they're really good, but they haven't really done. This is <laughs> take this all. At, this is really hard to say without I can like. I understand what you're saying though. Like, they, take they this at face value. They just got printed, so they're not going to hit the deck that just got printed. It, not even that. It's just like they haven't done much yet, and I know that sounds really stupid because obviously they, they have. They just want they're, mats. Um, they're, they're gonna win worlds. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I know, but. This list that we are talking about, this ban list, was made before Worlds, before Nats. Um, so, you know, I, I think, yeah. I would hope that they have the foresight to predict which deck wins, but I don't think that they do. Um, I mean, in all, in all honesty, I was, I was thinking about this, I was talking with uh, Bergen um, at Nats about this, and he said that a, a big thing that could happen, and I think would be a great game changer was taking 
uh, Dragosec and, well, just the extra deck cards in general. Like, if you get rid of, let's just say you put Dragosec to one, that can drastically changes the momentum of the deck. And, um, like, they make the one, and then you can get, it's easily, like, you can easily get around it. It's it's not, it's more or less the second Dragosec that, that will help win the game, you know, and the big guy. Um, so I think if you hit the extra deck cards, this is all theoretical. I know that the, um, that the list is made with four Nats and Worlds, which I think is sometimes not good. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think that's ever good, but... Um, but I think that um, getting rid of the extra deck cards will, will do a lot. Yeah, they're definitely not afraid of hitting extra deck cards. They've done it before. Like, they, um, they did it with, 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 with Sen Mighty and whatnot. Like, I think it's much more realistic that they would hit something like Big Eye, or possibly Dracosac, but I don't think so. But I think Big Eye going to 1, or even Band, is is definitely possible. I think it's way more possible than them hitting four different elemental dragons. Well, it's also I, would like like, I mean, I would, if, assuming this wasn't the case, and the deck was out a few months prior, I would think that the dragon should... I mean, hey man. if I was going to make a safe call, I'd say two, but I would think that one would be more optimal, because they're kind of like uh, the boss monsters for each attribute, and they're mm -hmm. really, really fucking busted at two. And I would think that uh, inherently Big Eye and Drago Sack should be pretty balanced cards, because a seven-star monster in any other deck, my, like minus maybe like... The only deck that could really abuse it, um, I mean, I really don't know the extent of the fan abuse, but the only other deck that could really pump out sevens and would still take a, a lot of cards to do it would be, like, Machina's. Um, but regardless of, of that, I would say that putting two seven-star monsters together to get a change of heart inherently seems pretty balanced, except for this specific scenario where that this, this deck just pumps out sevens for free. Well, um, how about this? Um, Zen Mighty, you know, in any other deck is totally fair and doesn't do anything. But you know, in windups, like you know, obviously it's broken, um, and then they hit it. Like, you have to think of the deck of the card in the context that it is in, not like in a vacuum where like normally it's fair, but because of this deck, it's not. Because um, I, I don't think Konami thinks like that. Um, well, I wish they did. You know, but, they, like, but I feel like the deck's gonna continue to be a, a big problem, even uh, even if they hit both of those cards for one. A lot of the times they again, they, Harry, um, I feel like the deck's just flawed. Like I do too, but a lot of times they use Occam's Razor to fix whatever the problem is. You know, if a simple solution to hitting that deck is is ban one card, they'll do it. Yeah. Or like ban two. If they if they have to just ban Super Ju, ban Big Eye, like they'll do that instead of. Hit four elemental dragons to one, uh, and ban super rejuvenation. Um, I think that's much more likely for Konami. I mean, just look I guess you're right. They're also uh, one. planning to release those tins coming out. Yeah, for <clears> those tins. I don't care about those tins. Th those tins don't mean anything. I didn't either. Uh, but you know, if we're gonna talk about um, reinforcing something, like I wouldn't say it's a essential reason. To, um, it's something to keep in the back of your mind. But, but uh, you know, to add more fire to it is all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I wish they would do what you're saying, Morph. I really want them to put them, all the dragons but, to one. But because... everything combined, it just seems like that's not the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What were you going to say, James? You were, uh, we cut you off. I was going to say all the exotic pieces are at one, so big dick. Um... Uh, my list, my list has has Dragosack and Big Eye going to one. Um, I don't know, and then just the deck stays the same. Cause I think the deck is kind of cool, like without Big Eye and all that stupid shit. You know, I don't know. I don't. I mean, my personal list has every extra deck card in the game at one as a hard and fast rule. Because I think that's a um, well, besides the ones that deserve to be banned, like Dark Strike, but um. I think one of every extra deck card is fine. Like it prevents a lot of problems, and it makes you really have to think about when you summon your stupid like hieratic dragon of a tomb or something. But that's that's for another day. That's just something I think should be the case. Yeah. So, um, would you guys predict well, wrapping back uh, Dragosac to one? Um, I'm gonna say Big Eye to one, and that's it. 
I'm sorry, I'm going to say big. Mm, yeah, big guy to one. Why big guy? Um, because he's been out longer. Fair enough. Yeah. And um, I don't think they're going to want to hit um, Mecha Phantom Beasts because in their mind, Mecha Phantom Beast Drago Sack is a Mecha Phantom Beast card, not a dragon card because they're retarded like that. Well, uh, Deloren, I don't think they think it's an Ice Barrier card and need a Shishola. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they, they, they know where these cards well, are being yeah. used, but, you know, you have to consider that um, as as they're hurting one deck, they're hurting other decks. Um, and I don't know if they want to hurt that deck that badly. Like, Mecha Phantom Beasts by themselves. Yeah, I can see that. I, I actually am starting to like the, the Mecha Phantom Beast thing. Like, the other cards that aren't Dragosec. The ones that, the ones that make tokens, like the uh, effect monsters. Mm-hmm. Kind of cool. Yeah, they're okay. But, uh, on the list, uh, is there anything else worth discussing? Um, um that pretty much wrap it up. I, I'm out of stuff. Uh, one card, um, I mean, if we're out of stuff. No, no, I think we're out of stuff. I am personally. Uh, this uh. card, um, uh, do you have anything before I like, go into it? Because it's not really that important. No, go ahead, dude. Alright, um, I don't see anything getting hit, uh, well, this card getting hit, but it's worth discussing. Um, but uh, some people think Pot of Avarice might get banned because they're releasing that new, um, very specific Pot of Avarice that's uh, coming out very soon. Hmm. I don't know the name of it, but uh, I think you can only activate it as like the first... Like, like Cold Wave line, like, you can only activate this as, like, the first, like, uh, like, and for lack of a better word, because I don't have the card in front of me, like, the first action of your main phase, play it, and then you can, um, average three, um, three monsters with different, I think, type? Yes. From your grave, back to the deck, and then draw two cards. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's just going to be a storm deal where like they're not going to hit a heavy storm but they printed storm um, but uh, I figured it's worth discussing with you guys because uh, you know if this is a bandless discussion video and people have been discussing this card it would be unfair to leave it out I wouldn't keep it off the table but like you said heavy storm storm scenario I think they printed it as a as like a fail safe like if ever one day they have to ban that card, they could be like, but you have this card, you know? Mm -hmm. Same thing for Heavy Storm. If they ever needed to ban Heavy Storm, they could be like, look, you have Storm. Just as good. All right. Any other cards? Um, I have Rekindling on That's the list. That's a good one. That's it. I forgot about the card. Uh, Laval's? Laval's are better, much better in Japan than they are here. Um, because a lot more people like that deck. Uh, people like to make shooting Quasar in Japan a lot more than they like to make stuff like that here. Um, I don't know how well it's done in tournaments, but I do know that that card is a real scary card. And, um, it's used in, uh, Fire Fists. Anything Fire plays it, you know? So, what do you think about that card? I mean, no, go ahead. I don't, um, I don't see them hitting, um, hitting, I mean, they could hit the card, but, uh, leaving, leaving the new card out of the equation, the new Fire Fist, I would say if you hit Rekindling, the Fire decks would have nothing to them. They would just straight suck. Like, they would, they, they had, there's no reason to run a Fire deck, they just, they lost the card they're bound to their end. Yeah, but do they deserve three of that card? Like, could it be a gateway type scenario where they get one and, you know, they have to use it at the right time? Or do you think that that's not even on the table well, for Konami? Well, I feel like um, in that deck, it's not a case of if they have the gateway, they win more. It's if they have the rekindling or, the, you know, how you parallel it, um, they need a rekindling to win. Because if they don't get the rekindling, they have no win condition. That's not true. The um, well, for Lavals, it kind of is, kind of. Um, but if you knew anything about Lavals, you know that they have a debris. Uh, not I know debris, they do. Yeah, they have they, a, a banished special summon guy. Lavals, they have a they have right? a Brianak. They have a um, 
What else do they have, James? They have a dual slasher, which is it's really good. hard for them. It's really hard for them to do anything without rekindling, is all I'm saying. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I'm not arguing that. And uh, I don't. Well, I, they, they, they do need rekindling because what happens is like they send everything to the grave, and then Handmaiden will activate and send everything to the grave, and then now they're with no rekindling. Congrats, they're in the grave. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. I'm saying it's definitely possible that they would put that card into two, just because it does see play and. Well, what's the timing now? I don't know if it really sees play, if you know what I mean. Like, it might be popular deck, and they have a history of hitting popular decks. Like, they hit Black Wings out of the blue a while back. I don't know what list it is, and it's not really that important. But Black Wings weren't doing absolutely anything, and that's the list they choose to put, I think, uh, Kalut to 1 and Icarus to 2. And that's just because it was popular in Japan, and it wasn't necessarily good, but a lot of people were just playing it, so, like, we might as well hit it. But um, yeah. I would feel like it's ill timing for them to hit rekindling as they're releasing all this fire support. Well, I think you're underestimating what the new fire fists do. Like, I think they're lousy too, and I think they're even lousy with rekindling. But, um, like, there's gonna, there's just gonna be games where they just top deck rekindling and steal games because it's just like just the raw attack points that they're gonna put on the board. Like, they yeah. can just rekindling for five and attack. I don't with agree with that. Um, however, I don't. I think this is the time that they will hit it, just because they're Konami and they're releasing a bunch of new fire cards. Fair enough. But, I mean, I'm not going to discount it, but I wouldn't bet on it. I would bet against it. Okay. I just felt like it was worth discussing. I think it's a really uh, powerful card, and it's played in Japan. Um, any th- any other decks you can think of that like we didn't touch about like touch on like decks not even just cards like notorious no like actual decks um uh, evil uh, Matt just said yeah, yeah, evil swarms and Constillers. I don't think uh, those would get hit at all well at least the evil swarms I, I really don't know enough about Constellar I don't think they made a precedence either but I feel like um, Konami recognized those decks like fairly scrape. Evil Swarms were bigger in Japan than they were here. Um, way bigger. They were they were the best deck in Japan, better than drag, uh, than dragons because. I don't know about all that. Are you sure? I, yes. I mean, every time I look um, at uh, like, like in Japan, polling. In Japan, Evil Swarms were the most expensive deck, not dragons. Uh, I've read a. I think in the V Jump they had um, a statistic of how many players or how many in like the national tournament. The percentages of decks that existed, and uh, it was like 44% like Dragon, 33% like Prophecy, 11% Evil Swarm, at least the Evil Swarm was 11%, I don't know the exact numbers, and then like 11% something else. And that probably doesn't combine to 100, because that was rough, but I know that Evil Swarm is around 10 to like 15% of the meta. And that's OCG, you're saying? Yeah. Maybe I was misinformed, or maybe I'm not saying it the right way I want to, but in Japan, they're much like, they're seen as better. I think their mentality, I'm trying to like describe their mentality. Like, I think in Japan, they think they're better because they're more expensive. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't think I of a I just TCG don't think equivalent. That's the case. Um, I, don't, I don't know if they do, is, is all. Like, I feel like um, in Japan, they, uh, all the. Uh, ARG players, you know, they would probably gravitate towards that deck instead of um, instead of dragons, because if they're going to get the deck for free, they're going to play the best deck in quotes. I, 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 that's just what I've been told. I don't even know if this is true. But yeah, this, is just, this is just something uh, I think Anthony told me. I don't want to put words in his mouth, though. It might have been somebody completely different. But um, I, I remember this from somewhere. I don't remember where, honestly. I just realized that, like, I'm recording over a, uh, a cool picture, and then I put a ba- uh, the titled uh, Bandless Discussion on the picture, and uh, I spelled discussion wrong. Good job. <laughs> and that's so they've been staring at that for, like, three hours? Saying, this motherfucker can't spell. <laughs> Are you sharing it? No, it's, um, I have it, it's, it's, it's like recording on a... So just uh, throw a graphic over it. Fucking, yeah, just put it in, uh, like, Sony Vegas and just throw a different design over it. Ow, I just banged my foot. Okay. Well, we have anything else to discuss? Well, what do we think is going to happen to Eagles Worms? Uh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you really think that, so? I love that deck. Absolutely nothing, I think. 
I think they're going to get hit really hard. Um, I just forgot about them until now. Pandemic or Ophion um, or what? Uh, maybe um, uh, Curriculum, but that's all I can think of. But I think I think the one possibly. Um, not not sure though. So if you're gonna say Curriculum, uh, what's this fucking face? Also, we get Sombre. Hit? Sombre, yeah. Um, even though they are equal, the decks are not equal. Like people don't play Constellars as much, and I think Constellars are really great, but I don't think people think that. that the 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 masses don't agree with me. You know. Yeah. Um, but, any other decks? Matt, you got anything to say over there? You've been quiet. He's probably playing Showdown or Fappin. Yeah. Alright, well. I'm going to put Lizak and Sellers in Evil Swarm. Okay. Alright, we have anything okay. else to uh, discuss? I don't think so. Alright, well, huh? uh, that about wraps it up. Thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, stay tuned.